South Africa plans to have at least 11,000 megawatts of electricity from renewables added to the grid by the year 2027. The country today launched the National Transmission Company of South Africa, or the NTCSA. The new entity forms part of ESCOM's subsidiary set to play a very important role in managing, of course, the transmission of electricity across the country. Energy and Electricity Minister Dr. Josienzo Ramokoba delivered a keynote address at the launch and Professor Hartman Winkler from the Department of Physics at the University of Johannesburg joins us now to further unpack this. Prof Winkler, a very good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for your time. So South Africa is seemingly making great strides in the positive direction and embracing innovation in different sectors uh, to ensure the ease of access to very key as well as critical services. What excites you about the launch of the NTCSA uh, South Africa? Okay, uh, this is uh, one of the three uh, legs of ESCOM, uh, the other two being the power generation and the distribution. So the transmission company's job is to get the power, the electricity from the power stations to uh, the municipalities essentially. And, and that had always been regarded as the one leg which was doing rather well in, in ESCOM and which could draw uh, investment. And I, I see that as a main reason for the splitting because uh, with the, the other two legs, uh, the distribution company, they have to try and, and, and uh, uh, collect uh, the debts and so on. That's not an easy task as far as the power generation leg. That, those are the ones which were struggling during load shedding with all the breakdowns in the, in the power plants. But the, uh, the transmission leg, which is essentially the power lines which cross the country, that had always been seen as something uh, quite uh, desirable, and uh, they are looking at attracting some sort of investment from the private sector. Uh, um, if they do so, I'm pretty sure they will get uh, uh, quite a bit. They're going to be expanding uh, the national grid. In particular, they are looking at uh, at uh, strengthening it in uh, towards some of the areas of the country which enjoy the highest uh, amount of sunshine and wind. That's largely the Northern Cape and Eastern Cape. Uh, and so on, to make it easier for uh, new solar and wind plants to be uh, integrated into the electricity network. Absolutely, Prof. I mean, uh, thank you for pointing that out, uh, that this is actually part of the power utilities, uh, of course, uh, projects uh, or plan to proceed with its plans to unbundle uh, into three entities. So it will serve as quite the vessel uh, to deliver unparalleled reliability as well as uh, efficiency uh, to South Africa, as well as other designated electricity markets. Uh, yes, I believe so. I, th I think they, this has been talked about for quite a while and uh, they, they, they talk of the launch now, but in effect, it's already been um, um, operating. It's had a board now for a while. So it, it, it's not a major change that happened today. I think it, it's, it's all part of a process that's been uh, going on for uh, for quite some time. Uh, so now we're going to have to see how that, I saw a figure of, of uh, uh, just over 100 billion that they're hoping to to uh, to uh, in, in inject uh, into uh, largely the construction and maintenance of of of, of uh, uh, specific lines over the next five years. Uh, I'm sure they already have uh, pretty much worked out exactly where they're going to be uh, uh, building and, and and what. I know the area around Uppington. There there've been plans there for a while. And, and I guess that can now, now uh, uh, proceed. But yes, it's already been uh, uh, moving for quite a while. So we're just seeing uh, uh, the, the next step uh, in, in, in this trajectory. Absolutely, Prof. And its main objective is, of course, uh, to ease or, 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 or simplify the ease of doing business. And needless to say that uh, we are not yet out of the energy crisis yet in fears, even though uh, there has been quite significant improvement. But let's further explore, uh, Professor, the other benefits of uh, the NTCSA uh, in addressing infrastructural deficiencies, technology based, as well as driven tracking mechanisms to guard against corruption or fraud by using AI as well as other uh, innovative tools in order to safeguard business transactions? Uh, that may be the ca case. I, I can't comment too much on that. I, I, I personally don't really see them operating very differently to what uh, uh, the, uh, how they've been operating in, in, in the past under Eskom. Yes, certainly um, the, there, is, uh, there are moves to 
uh, to uh, make the, the electricity provision as a whole uh, be much more aligned with uh, well, what you call smart grids and so on. So basically uh, working out exactly where you need the power when and uh, adjusting things accordingly, although that's largely going to be on a, on a municipal level. And uh, so, uh, I, as I said, I don't, I don't foresee any, any major changes uh, in, in, in the short term regarding that. I hope in some of those short-term changes, Prof, would be the good news, of course, of the high number of jobs that it could pos- uh, potentially inject as well as create, uh, as, uh, as of course it hires those future innovators in the STEM fields, while simultaneously encouraging them also to venture into these fields. We're currently hearing a lot about South Africa not having the required skills and has to resort to importing them. Uh, yes, well... It- with regards to this transmission company as a whole, they would just be building a new a new power line. So that's something for which uh, there is already quite a bit of experience in. But of course, uh, just the fact that there is going to be all this construction work is going to offer uh, jobs and opportunities for training uh, of people. So that is, is going to be uh, a, a, a positive aspect to it. Uh, the other thing about this whole transmission company, it's going to be uh, running to some degree as a, almost like a company that's uh, uh, like some of the tolling companies uh, uh, operate on the roads. Uh, what's, what we're going to see increasingly happen, it's already started, is that uh, the, uh, you're going to get private investors building uh, a power generating facility in one part of the country, but actually using it somewhere else. So uh, we've seen a, a recent example of that with one of the uh, mines in the Richards Bay area uh, building so- two solar plants in Northwest Province. Uh, so what happens is it's uh, the, the power gets generated in Northwest Province, but it's not those very same electrons that eventually move uh, to the, via the grid to Richards Bay. It's rather a case that uh, it gets loaded on the on the national grid, and it just means that uh, the, the user, in this case, the company in Richards Bay. Uh, just draws the equivalent amount of power uh, uh, from uh, from the grid. It, it, it's something referred to as wheeling, and I think that's going, we're going to see a lot more of that. And that also speaks to this whole idea of, uh, if you like, the, um, the 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 future grid, where uh, you're going to see more and more of this uh, this kind of interaction, uh, which is not how we uh, the grid has operated traditionally. Mm, Something to sink our teeth into. Prof, thank you so much for your valuable input this afternoon. Professor Hartmann Winkler, the Physics Department at the University of Johannesburg.